am drawing the objects or the pictures that I want to use as the part of my artwork that will be popping out when I put on the chroma depth glasses. And I'm picking something that's easy to draw. Um, I'm drawing it really big. And then I'm also going to draw it going off the page. So right now I just have two flowers. And I'm gonna also draw some flowers that are going off the page. It might be half of the flower that shows up. It might just be a couple of petals that show up. You might be able to see most of the flower but then the rest of it goes off the page. Having those shapes really big means it's gonna be easier to paint it in and having them go off the page means that when I put on those chroma depth glasses, it's gonna look really cool because there's gonna be different objects kind of popping out everywhere. So now that I have it drawn with pencil, I'm going to double check that my paper is full of these big drawings and that I have some that are going off the page and then I'm ready to just carefully trace over those pencil lines with Sharpie. Now that all of my shapes are traced with Sharpie, I am ready to start painting with the warm colors. So I'm gonna use red, orange, and yellow to paint all of these shapes because those are the colors that are gonna pop out when we put on the chroma depth glasses. I'm gonna start with the color yellow and I wanna show you, if I add just a little water and I don't mix up my paint, my paint very good, when I go to paint it, it's gonna be kind of pale. It's not gonna be very bright. And if your colors aren't bright, then they're not gonna work with the chroma depth glasses. So what you wanna do is you wanna really wake up your paint. So what I'm doing is I am really mixing that water and paint together. And then I'm gonna get a much brighter color. Um, in order to make your shapes pop out, you need to take some time and make sure that you're painting as closely to inside the lines as you can. So an easy way to do that is get a lot of bright, bright, really well mixed paint on your brush and then have that brush kind of form a sharp tip. And you're gonna start, if you have any corners or small spaces, you're gonna start in those small spaces with that part. And then you're going to line up the edge of your brush with the edge of the Sharpie and just pull that paint in one direction. So when we use markers or colored pencils, we add color by going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But when you're using paint, you wanna always line up that edge with the paintbrush and you're just gonna pull it. You're not gonna go back and forth, back and forth because then you won't get as much uh, control, right? I'm not gonna try and twist my hand around in an awkward position to paint this side right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my hand comfortable and I'm just gonna turn my paper. So probably ran out of paint so I need to get a little bit more paint. And now I can comfortably line up the edge of my brush with that Sharpie line and pull that paint to paint in that part of my shape. What I want you to think about is when you're painting, like let's say I needed to paint this flower petal right here, okay? So I would do the exact same thing, but I'm not gonna be able to set my hand flat on the paper. Because if I do set it flat on the paper, I'm going to show you. It messes up my artwork, right? So I messed up my artwork. I got paint on my hand. It is not a fun time. Um, so what I want to do 
is instead of setting it flat on the paper, I am going to anchor my elbow into the table. Let me see if I can show you. So I've got my elbow touching the table so that I've got stability in my arm, right? So my, my arm isn't like up in the air wobbling around like a chicken wing. It is anchored into the table. It's touching the table so my arm has some stability. And then my hand can be floating, right? So I don't have to have my hand touching the table because my elbow and my arm are touching the table. And then I'm able to paint with control the same way that I would paint if my hand was touching the table. And the same thing, I'm not gonna twist my arm to come right here, turn it, I'm anchoring my elbow in, and then I can hold my hand up in the air and finish painting that shape. So, you are going to paint all of your shapes in with the red, the orange, and the yellow. You're going to start with yellow, move to orange, and then the last color you're going to do with your shapes is red. I want you to notice that I don't have any designs for my background, and I'm not going to be painting that background space with any of the warm colors. So the only thing I'm gonna paint is my flowers, and the only colors I'm gonna use are red, orange, and yellow. I've got all of my objects or shapes painted in with those warm colors, red, orange, and yellow. Once your artwork looks like this, you are going to put it in the drying rack. You're not gonna paint anything in the background. Don't paint anything in those empty white spaces that are around your shapes leave the background completely white. We're gonna let it dry overnight and then tomorrow we will start on the next step.